among online growth, just some guy stands out for several reasons. From the way I understand it, he's black, he's gay. But for my purposes, what's really interesting is he's actually genuinely well informed on comic books as well as J.R.R. Tolkien. So he's put out a lot of videos attacking gay people, queers, and feminists, and even Black Lives Matter sometimes, and some other people. So you'd think he'd be the typical right-wing YouTuber, but that's not the case because occasionally, and very recently, he's taken on the Christian right for, I think, legitimate reasons. So we're going to narrow the scope for this particular controversy. I think in a larger context, he is hypocritical. He can't be trusted on many issues, so he is a grifter. But on this particular thing, I think he's actually very informative. It's actually an interesting deeper issue, namely of how religion and religious imagery and iconography works in comic books. And I think his point is fairly solid, though I'm going to delve a little bit more into it. And essentially, he's arguing some people on the Christian right suspected some kind of agenda being put into the X-Men comics because they had a fictional character, and they seem to be implying, I think Jesus is a mutant, and that upset a lot, a lot of people. But I think he's correct that there's nothing to be offended at, and if you are offended, who cares? Never mind. So that's what Exodus walks in on. Exodus, for those who don't know, is a mutant religious nut. He was augmented by Apocalypse and served as the leader of Magneto's Acolytes for a time. He's an Omega-level psionic, and his powers are increased by people's faith in him and his faith in himself, hence the religious theme. Hope was the first mutant born after Day, after Scarlet Witch declared no more mutants. Hope would later combine with the Phoenix and with Wanda's help, undo Wanda's actions, restoring the mutant race. This, along with Hope's status as the first mutant born after Day, resulted in some mutants seeing her as a messiah. I'm giving you the context so that this entire thing makes sense. So what happens is that Exodus goes to Hope to try to talk her into taking Magneto's seat, and he calls her Messiah. They have some back and forth about that, and Exodus says, quote, The Nazarene mutant inspired a church among the humans by raising a couple from the dead. I just watched you beat that in five minutes. And that's it. There's no further mention of the Nazarene mutant, no commentary about the truth or validity of the church he inspired, not even a casual nod to the fact that within the Marvel Universe, Christians are one of the leading groups who persecutes mutants, making Exodus's revelation ironic. Just two sentences in one panel on one page that's hand-waved away by Hope as, quote, acolyte stuff. And for the mere suggestion that in the fictional universe of Marvel, where mythological figures like Thor and Hercules walk among men, the Christian right got pissy that this could apply to the mythological figure of Jesus, too. I guess it's okay to fictionalize everyone else's mythology, just not theirs. Of course, they might argue that Jesus isn't a myth, but a real person, which would be a valid argument if literature and films weren't littered with fictionalized versions of historical people, like having the former emperor of France be transported into a modern mall, or turning the president of the United States into a vampire hunter, or claiming a first century apocalyptic preacher was actually a deity who impregnated a 14-year-old girl, with her consent, so he could father himself to understand what it's like to be human, despite being all-knowing. We fictionalize historical figures all the time, some of them better than others, and without the centuries of oppression, violence, and indoctrinating kids. You might then say, well, it's different. Yeah, so I think his basic point is correct, that it was a legitimate use of fiction to speak on religion. And honestly, I don't think it was offensive. I mean, the person doing this is a villain. The panel itself doesn't appear to be offensive. It's not really graphic. It's not a lot of swearing. It's not even directly attacking religion. I guess some people are upset that the notion of Jesus being a mutant takes away from the mythology, but again, that's the whole point. It's a mythology. We don't know what's true and untrue. What happened with Jesus is still very much disputed. There's agreement over the basic facts, but there's a lot of controversy over who he was, what he was up to, did these miracles really happen, did he have these powers? so on and so forth. And this was related not just to comic book, but to film, because there was a massive controversy with Martin Scorsese and how he portrayed Jesus. And he, of course, defended himself on many grounds, but they didn't even care there was a freedom of speech issue. They were just saying this is beyond the bound. He portrayed Jesus as too human, so it was a sinful, disgusting work, and they wanted it to be suppressed. So this is affecting us to this day in many different contexts, but I think he's basically correct. That said, I actually do disagree with him on the agenda issue. Whatever the X-Men are, they're definitely agenda-driven. This book for decades has been 
fairly consistently espousing a fairly liberal to left-wing point of view that shows up in many, many issues. So I understand where he's going with this, that these Christian rightists are panicking over nothing, but I do disagree with him that there is zero agenda. I don't think the X-Men comic book are pushing a, quote, anti-Christian, atheist, communist agenda or whatever. On the other hand, are they hostile to the Christian right? I'd have to say so. On a very consistent basis, they do keep equating a lot of these Christian fundamentalists to racists, bigots, Nazis. The Nazi allegory analogy comes up a lot. And to be fair, yes, there is a lot of evidence that, quote, these right-wing Christians did work with Nazis and they even work with Nazis after the war. So there is a connection. There is an overlap. But there are, of course, many conservative Christians who are not fascists, they're not Nazis. So I think the equation is lazy. There's a basis for it, but I do think the X-Men books do slip into attacking Christianity here and there, being lazy and linking it to the Nazis and fascists and a bunch of right-wing reactionaries. Again, it's true, it does happen a lot. Can't deny that, but no, there are a lot of conservative Christians, even extreme Christians, but they're just being consistent. They may sometimes have bigoted views here and there, but they're just following what they think is the word of God. Can't really dispute those people. They often do a lot of charity work in the third world. They actually do way more than the left. They actually do work with the poor one-on-one. -on -one. So I think people are being very selective in what they think the Christian right is. The Christian right and Christian left sometimes actually collaborate on a lot of projects. So it's not right to, quote, castigate all Christian conservatives. That's a big category. If you're focusing on these genuine extremists, like these Christian fascists, I have no issue with that. But... I would actually disagree with him there on the agenda issue. I think he's being a little naive that that is not inserted into the books. Now, of course, the, now the admirers of X-Men might say, well, no, they're just being anti-fascist, right? Aren't you anti-fascist? Well, I am anti-fascist, but not stupidly, right? It's one thing to be anti-fascist on principle. It's another thing just to be anti-fascist and just throw the word around all the time for political purposes that don't warrant. Like, for instance, the Florida bill, which I do agree is probably very homophobic. But can I say this is part of a Christian fascist conspiracy? I don't know about that. It's definitely a right-wing thing, but is this part of a larger fascist conspiracy? Maybe, maybe not. I'd want to do more investigation. So I think we've got to be careful with jumping the gun every time a right-wing Christian says X or Y. There's really a Nazi fascist conspiracy behind it. Sometimes there is. There is. There's definitely a link between these groups, between the extreme Christian right in these neo-Nazi groups, but to say that they're always collaborating or that there's always a shared conspiracy, that I'm a little doubtful. So maybe there's not an explicit kind of agenda to make everyone an atheist, but I do think there are, are definitely biases at work with the X-Men books, particularly. And I can cite chapter and verse where they definitely do link the Christian right repeatedly to fascism, even when it's not warranted. So there I'm a little bit more skeptical than just some guy. But I do agree with his basic point that it is perfectly legitimate to reinterpret Jesus in your own way, even a way that's offensive. That's the point of putting these historical figures in fiction is to rethink them and reinterpret them.